Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Moberly Jordan incident. This is one of the most famous cases of possible time travel, but it also might just be a ghost story. I don't know. I'm not here to tell you what to think, so I'll just tell you the story and let you decide for yourself. In 1901, two professors from St. Hugh's College in Oxford, England went to take a little visit to the Palace of Versailles, which if you didn't know was the French royal home until the monarchy was abolished in 1792. That means that this was once the home of Marie Antoinette, and she was one of the last royals to live there before she was executed in 1793. So on this visit in 1901 by these two professors, they're just walking around, seeing the sites, enjoying their time. As they're checking out the private retreat built for Marie Antoinette by her husband Louis the 16th, boom, out of nowhere, these two just see the Marie Antoinette sitting there, sketching away, dressed in 1780s attire. But not only her, there were a bunch of people also dressed in this same sort of way who seemingly just appeared out of nowhere. Just as quickly as they appeared, however, once the tour guide approached the two professors, all of the people vanished. The pair ended up writing a book about their experience which was quite successful because of how grounded it seemed. Did they travel through time? Did they see ghosts? Or is this all just made up? In our number 9 spot today we have the bookstore. In 1996 a man and his wife were out in Liverpool doing a bit of shopping. The man's wife went into a bookstore and instead of accompanying her there, he wandered off down the street in search of a CD store. As he strolled down the street he began to notice everything getting quiet. After this he noticed a van that looked like it was from the 1950s that honked and swerved around him. At this moment he realized that he was somehow standing in the middle of the street and that everyone around him was dressed in 50s styled clothing. Like anyone would be in this situation, he was super confused and he went to head back to the bookstore where he had left his wife, but when he turned around, the bookstore didn't even exist anymore. Where the bookstore was a minute ago was now a women's clothing store, and as soon as he did, it turned back into the bookshop he had initially left his wife in. He was back in 1996 and could not figure out what the heck had just happened to him. After this whole ordeal, he also learned that the clothing store he had seen and gone into hadn't existed since the the 1950s either. Whether this is a real time travel story or there's some sort of other explanation behind it, that poor man was probably absolutely terrified. In our number 8 spot today we have Hutton and Brent. In 1932, journalist J. Bernard Hutton and photographer Joachim Brandt were sent by the German newspaper to the Hamburg shipyard in order to do a story. Everything was going fine and well and normal and honestly kind of uneventful until things took a large crazy turn. Both Hutton and Brandt realized that they were caught in an air raid and had bombs raining down around them. Brandt, like the dedicated photographer he was, snapped a few photos, but the pair quickly evacuated the area to get to safety. When they returned to central Hamburg all shaken up, no one believed their story at all. They got the photos developed in order to show their proof, but to their surprise, the photos showed no such thing that would suggest the story they were telling. With no evidence and no one around who would believe them, the pair had no choice but to just go on living their lives. 11 years later, however, Hutton was living in London and he opened up the newspaper one day to see what he never expected. The newspaper that day detailed the story of Operation Gamora, which was an air raid on Hamburg and the photos in the paper looked exactly like what he had experienced 11 years earlier. Did these two somehow end up getting teleported to a time 11 years later while they were out doing that story that day? I truly don't know what other kinds of explanations there could be. In our number 7 spot today we have Live Your Lie. A guy on TikTok who goes by the username Live Your Lie has begun to post videos claiming that he is a time traveler from the year 3036 and he offers his warnings to all of us. He tells his followers that they are as free as they will ever be right now and that our kids won't even see freedom. He says, so suck it up because as simple minded as your time period is, you got it pretty good, you just don't know it. Okay Mr. Live Your Lie, don't absolutely roast us all. Anyway, when asked about the world population in his year, he says it's just over 2 billion people. He talks about something called the Big Blackout which he says happens in December of 2052. He says that the Big Blackout is when basically everything goes dark for upwards of 5 years, the internet, the power, it all gets disconnected on account of what's called the terrors, but many speculate otherwise. 
He says that during these years there's riots, turmoil, and that it's just the worst of times, and that it takes 20 years for things to get fully back online. He also adds that in the year 3036 we still have zoos, but all of the largest animals are gone, so the zoos then actually just consist of animals like dogs and cats. I'm honestly not sure what to make of this one. Like, if he really is a time traveler, I appreciate the heads up on what's to come, but couldn't he have also said like one nice thing about the future? Also, if time travel exists in 3036, why doesn't everyone just head back in time to when things were good? I don't know. Maybe there's some sort of reason, or maybe he's lying. I guess one day someone will find out for sure. In our number six spot today, we have Sir Victor Goddard. In 1935, when Air Marshal Sir Victor Goddard was still a wing commander, he was instructed to head over to an airbase that was located in Drem, Scotland, that was inactive at the moment. As he flew over the base, he noticed it was in pretty terrible condition and that cattle had now begun grazing through the grass that found its way through the tarmac. Later on, as he was still flying, he found himself in a bit of a bad spot due to terrible weather conditions. To avoid anything bad happening, he decided decided to land at this inactive airbase and wait out the bad weather. What's weird however is as he got close to the base, the torrential downpour abruptly stopped and the sky very suddenly opened up with bright sun shining down. This was weird but not totally unexplainable, but what was unexplainable is that the inactive airbase could now be seen in full use and full of mechanics in blue overalls working on yellow planes. This was weird for a number of reasons. Firstly, he had just seen the base and it was not even close to looking like this, so how could this all have just come out of nowhere? The mechanics weren't wearing their khaki colored uniforms that were the norm then, and the Air Force didn't use yellow planes, they instead painted all of their planes silver, and there was one plane there that he wasn't able to identify or recognize. Sir Goddard left the situation completely confused and shocked, but that shock only got worse four years later when he visited Drem again. After the years that had passed, when he visited again, Again, he saw the exact same scene he had seen four years before, like a full deja vu moment. Did he get confused on that day four years earlier? Did he fly into the future? Was this some sort of a flight 828 situation? Unfortunately, there's a good chance we may never know for sure what really happened. In our number five spot today, we have time travel underscore zero. Okay, so this is one that at the time was both one of the most famous and one of the most believed cases around. In the year 2000, an online thread began about time travel paradoxes on a forum for the Time Travel Institute. On the thread, a user commented on how a time machine could theoretically be made, and this prompted the response of a user whose screen name was time travel underscore zero, and they said, Wow, Paul is right on the money. I was just about to give up hope on anyone knowing who Tipler or Kerr was on this word line. By the way, number two is the correct answer and the basics for time travel start at CERN in about a year and end in 2034 with the first time machines built by GE. Too bad we can't post pictures or I'd show it to you. Okay, so this is obviously insinuating that whoever the heck time travel underscore zero is, is a time traveler. Throughout the next year, people continued to post questions and messages they had for this guy on that thread, and throughout time, time travel underscore zero became known as John Titter, and he told us all his story in great detail. He said that he had been sent back to 1975 in order to bring an IBM 5100 computer to his own time, but he was just stopping into 2000 for a brief rest on his way back home. I guess time travel is exhausting? I personally would not know. He said that the reason for the mission to get the computer was because he needed it to debug various legacy computer programs in 2036 in order to combat a known problem where UNIX was going to have a problem in 2038, similar to what people thought was going to happen in the changeover from 1999 to 2000. There definitely are people out there who still believe that John was a real time traveler, so I guess I'll just leave this one up to you to decide. In our number four spot today, we have the time traveling hipster. This photo appeared on the Virtual Museum of Canada website and it was originally taken in 1941. The photo is said to have been taken at the reopening of the South Fork Bridge in Goldbridge, British Columbia, Canada. At a first glance, this photo is just normal and that story sounds perfectly reasonable, but once we take a closer look, it is clear why this photo went viral. There's that one guy in it who isn't dressed similarly to anyone else in the photo. While someone with their own unique personal style isn't exactly an anomaly, 
it certainly is very weird and suspicious that he seems like he could be from our current times, which is exactly why he has been dubbed the time traveling hipster. It appears as though he is wearing a more modern style of sunglasses, some sort of printed t shirt with a cardigan over top, and it even looks like he is holding some sort of compact camera that wasn't exactly widespread in the 1940s. Maybe the time traveling hipster really is just that, or maybe he really just was a guy from 1941 who walked off the beaten path so that hipsters today could run. I'm not really sure what to make of this one, to be honest. In our number three spot today, we have Andrew Carlson. On January 28th, 2003, Andrew Carlson was arrested and held by the police for insider trading at Wall Street. This was because of the fact that in two weeks, through the stock market, Andrew was able to go from having $800 to making $350 million. Yep. $350 million in two weeks. That is absolutely insane. When the authorities arrested him, they assumed he made his profits through obtaining illegal insider trading information. But when they asked him how he was able to do this, Andrew said that he was actually from the year 2256, and so he knew exactly how all of the stocks were going to perform. Obviously, no one believed this story and just assumed he was telling an extremely far fetched lie, which in circumstances like this would seem like a pretty safe assumption. But get this, when Andrew was released on bail, he totally disappeared and despite several attempts to find him, no one has ever been able to locate him. To make matters even a little wilder, it is said that he was also able to accurately predict the exact date of the US invasion of Iraq. Not sure how, but that's what the internet tells me. In our number two spot today, we have Edward. Edward is a man who has claimed that he has proof of the apocalypse, and he even brings photos along to prove it. Edward first appeared on Apex TV, which I'll be the first to admit hasn't exactly been a source of credible information, but who knows, maybe this is the time that they got it right. Edward claims that he was part of a top secret program in 2004, and that he was chosen to time travel to the year 5000. This photo I just talked about is a photo that Edward carries that shows Los Angeles completely underwater. In fact, Edward says that in the year 5000, the entire world is underwater, but humans have found a way to live on the water. He claims it happened because of global warming and explained that there was just too much CO2 in the air, which step by step destructed the natural shield zone. I'm not a Photoshop expert, so I wouldn't even know what to look for while looking at these photos he claims to have taken in the year 5000, so you guys let me know, you Photoshop experts watching this. In our number one spot today, we have Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, before I started making this list, I was not convinced that time travel would be a possibility, but after making this list, I think I might be convinced that Edgar Allan Poe is a time traveler. Seriously, just hear me out on this one. There are two main examples why, and I'm gonna do my best to keep them concise. So firstly, Poe's only completed novel was published in 1838, and it tells the tale of mutiny on a whaling ship lost at sea. The men on the ship realize that they need to resort to some extreme measures in order to stay alive, so they begin Again, drawing straws to see who they're going to sacrifice for food. A boy named Richard Parker drew the shortest straw, and therefore he became the next meal. Okay, so let's fast forward 46 years to 1884, and in real life, there are now four men who have been set adrift after the sinking of a yacht. These men found themselves in a similar predicament to the novels, and I kid you not, they ended up taking the same route and elected to take the life of and then eat a cabin boy. The cabin boy's name? Richard Parker. Not convinced yet? Well, what if I told you that he accurately predicted a scientific advancement before it was even known by, well, scientists? In 1840, Poe penned the gruesome story The Businessman, in which the narrator suffers a traumatic head injury as a child and later lives a violent life. The weird thing about this story is that he was able to grasp frontal lobe injury so well before it was even a thing that was able to be greatly studied, as the first time behavioral change caused by this kind of injury were able to be studied didn't come until 1848. An actual neurologist, Eric Altschuler, wrote, there's a dozen symptoms and he knows every single one. There's everything in that story. We've hardly learned anything more. It's so exact that it's just weird. It's like he had a time machine. Maybe I didn't convince you, but I'm not gonna lie. 
This convinced me. In our number 10 spot, we have the woman on her cell phone. There is a painting by Ferdinand George Waldmuller from 1860 called The Expected One. This painting shows a woman walking through what appears to be a trail while holding an object which looks an awful lot like a cell phone. She also is seemingly transfixed by what she's looking at, similar to how people look at their cell phones when scrolling or sending a text today. People have looked at this painting and have perceived this woman as a possible time traveler and hey, I see it. What else could that object be? What else could a woman of that time be holding? What could be as small as a cell phone and also something that she could be so focused on? I'm sure there are quite a few answers to this, but whatever. We are going to say that it's clearly a cell phone and she's clearly a time traveler. The end. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to smash that like button as it will really help us out. In our number nine spot, we have actor Rupert Grint. There is a Scottish painter by the name of Sir David Wilkie who lived in the 18th and 19th centuries and whom looked very similar to a very famous actor today. Fans of Rupert Grint, who played the infamous Ron Weasley in the Harry Potter franchise, were shocked to see a portrait of David and how he looked looks extremely similar to Rupert. Could it be possible that Rupert is really just a time traveler who has traveled to this time to capture our hearts and souls on the screen? A lot of people think so, as you cannot deny that the two look quite similar. However, personally, I think this is one painting I disagree with, as I don't think they look enough alike for this to be the same person. I know that some people share a theory that time travelers change certain features on their face so that they're not recognizable, but something makes me think that this theory is a bit of a stretch and truly isn't the same person. I don't know. If we were to believe that time travelers exist, of course. And we do. <laughs> In our number eight spot, we have Keanu Reeves. Okay, if I could get on board with any celebrity being a time traveler, it would definitely be Keanu Reeves because he is just magical. Do you agree? There's something about him that seemingly makes him likable to literally everyone on the planet. I truly wonder if there's anyone who dislikes him. So he is either magical or a time traveler, but that would also make him magical, so he's probably both. <laughs> There is a very mysterious painting from the 1500s of a man that has a striking resemblance to Keanu Reeves. This painting has made its rounds online and has convinced a lot of people that he must be a time traveler. This is definitely one of the paintings on this list that truly feels like it could be real because of how similar Keanu looks to this man. The thing is though, Keanu seems to have a lot of people throughout history that looks like him, including King Charlemagne around 800 AD, as well as the 20th. 20th century French actor Paul Mountet. So it's because of all of these possible time traveler sightings that the internet is convinced that Keanu is immortal. And I'm here for it. I love him. In our number seven spot, we have a man and his cell phone. Here we have yet another mysterious painting where this time a man is holding an object that is seemingly looking like a cell phone. I don't know, it looks like a cell phone. It seemingly is a cell phone. This is an oil painting made by a painter named Peter de Hooch from the year 1670. Some people have said that this man was a messenger and that it was a letter that holding not a phone and that seems definitely more likely. However, this cell phone theory is way more fun. <laughs> Imagine if people had cell phones in those days, they would have definitely been called witches as this was around the time where the witch trials were taking place all around the world. So it's probably accurate to say that if he was holding a cell phone, he would have probably been more discreet about it, or maybe not. Perhaps he's a cheeky kind of guy and loves to play with fire. In any case, I personally think that it looks more like a phone that he's holding than a letter, so I'm gonna say this one is definitely a time traveler. In our number six spot, we have Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone has been trending online recently because people believe that he could be a potential time traveler. Why, you may ask? Well, it's because of a painting of a man called Pope Gregory the Ninth approving the Vatical Decretals. You have to admit, this guy looks like he is Sylvester Stallone. The resemblance is uncanny. If this is not Sylvester, then it has to be someone directly related to him by blood. 
right? Th that is the only conclusion. Okay, but in all seriousness, if this guy is not related to him and this is not him, then this is a very good example of how it is possible to have a twin somewhere else in the world, possibly on a different time frame, but it is still possible that someone else could exist in the history of the world that looks just like you. Such a cool thought. In our number five spot, we have Nicolas Cage. Okay guys, here is another one. Man, this list is actually kind of blowing my mind. There are way too many paintings that look exactly like famous actors. This one looks like actor Nicolas Cage. I am a massive, massive fan of the National Treasure movies, so I definitely have a sweet spot for good old Nicolas. But also, he encouraged Johnny Depp to become an actor, so bless you, Nick. <laughs> you gave us a gift we cannot ever repay you for. Anyways, there is a painting of a Mexican emperor, Maximiliano of Habsburgo, I hope I didn't butcher that, and Sir Nick looks like his doppelganger. But let's be real, he probably is. <laughs> the only thing is people seem to say that Nick looks like he's a lot of people from different time periods, so honestly, who knows? He does have a very mysterious quality to him, so perhaps that is why people are quick to think that he might be, you know, a time traveler. In our number four spot, we have Jack Gleason. This is the only one on this list that is not a painting, but just needed an honorable mention. Honestly, this was a hard list to research, so, you know, just love me. <laughs> Jack Gleason, one of the stars of Game of Thrones that played the infamous Joffrey, looks surprisingly a lot like a statue of the Roman Emperor Caligula. Almost identical. If you have watched Game of Thrones, then you would know that his character is the king for a while and what a terrible king he was. Perhaps he had some practice from once being a Roman emperor. Some say yes. <laughs> this statue is too much like him that he must be a time traveler. Either that or he's immortal and he's been alive since this time. In our number three spot, we have Michael Jackson. This is a really interesting one. People think that it's possible that Michael Jackson was a time traveler. Okay, if Michael Jackson was a time traveler, then maybe he isn't actually dead and he just traveled to another time. Michael is known for being someone who loved art, so it's possible that he even styled one of his looks based off of a painting that weirdly looks like him, but truly, it is rather strange that this painting really looks like him. Perhaps he actually traveled back in time in a time machine and someone painted him and that is how this painting exists? Ooh, what if instead of being dead, he's trapped in the painting? Like what happens in the movie The Witches based on Roald Dahl's book. It's fun to imagine scenarios like this. Anyways, there's no denying the resemblance and the similarities in their fashion choices. Pretty strange. In our number two spot, we have Peter Dinklage. If you do not know who Peter Dinklage is, then I can only assume that you haven't viewed one of the greatest television series of all time, Game of Thrones. Oh, and also, Elf, what a movie. Anyways, Peter is one of the most iconic stars from Game of Thrones, probably the fan favorite, besides Arya, Sansa, Jon Snow. Okay, never mind. there were too many great characters. There is a painting of a man that looks just like Peter though. The painting is called The Portrait of Sebastian de Mora by a man named Diego Velasquez. It was painted between 1644 to 1645. It truly looks just like Peter, so I understand why people look at this painting and immediately think it's him. Is everyone a time traveler in Hollywood? It feels like yes. In our number one spot, we have Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, the creator of Facebook, has definitely been called a robot, an alien, a shapeshifter, and now I'm learning that people believe him to be a possible time traveler, and it is because of a painting of the King of Spain, Philip IX. The painting was said to have been done in 1624 by a man named Diego Velasquez. I may be butchering his name, but hey, a trad. <laughs> He looks like an awful lot like Mark. Some same droopy eyes, long face, hair color, nose, and also possibly hair texture. Kinda hard to make out, but it looks like it. The only thing is, the king appears to have bigger lips, but who knows, maybe the artist did that. Or perhaps Mark had a lip reduction. <laughs> Anyways, not sure I'm on board with this theory fully, but the robot theory might have some solid arguments. Starting off this countdown, we have the photographic evidence. A couple of years ago, a man named Edward came forward claiming 
that he was a time traveler from the year 5000. He even came with evidence. Now he used a fake name and had his identity hidden so people weren't going to come after him. So according to Edward he claims he was part of a top secret experiment that took place in 2004. During the test he was successfully transported in time. He was taken to LA 5000 years in the future. And it's not looking too good. He said and I quote, I was standing on a huge wooden platform and after I realized it was the same city, Los Angeles, but underwater. This man's claims were backed up with evidence. He took a photo of LA underwater. I don't even know what to think. Either he's good at photoshop or he's actually a time traveler. I just thought that the water would be way more polluted than that. Like that's far too clear. You know, it's a little sketchy. In our ninth spot we have Vladimir Putin. Turns out that the president of Russia is a time traveler. Take a look at these photos. First we got a Russian soldier from 1920 and he looks identical to Putin. Then we have another Russian soldier from 1941 and he also looks like a young Putin who is pictured on the far right. Too eerie. Either he's a mortal or he's a time traveler. Moving on to number 8 we have the TikTok time traveler. Now I talked about this case briefly before and I'm throwing it on today's list because it's the most recent case of time travel. Basically a guy named Javier claims that he is a time traveler who is now stuck in the year 2027. The scariest part is that the entire human race is wiped out by then. On his TikTok page he posts videos of him wandering the streets of Spain alone. He has gone to stadiums, airports, police stations, hospitals, restaurants and malls. No one is there except himself. Which is crazy because normally those places would be packed with people, but they aren't. So here's the thing, either he's a time traveler and was sent to the future to warn us or he's somehow faking it. But a number of people have analyzed his videos. Some people believe he edits everyone out of the video. Sure, it's possible to edit objects and people out of videos, but it's harder to do with multiple people in the shot, in which there would be, and it's harder if the people are moving around, which they would be. Another theory is that these videos were pre-filmed, that they were filmed during the pandemic when they were under lockdown and had a curfew. But in order to prove that that's not the case, he gets his followers to tell him where he should go next. He then will go to that specific place and prove no one is there. The freakiest part is he has gone to hospitals. If this was filmed during the pandemic the hospitals would be filled with people. But when he walks around no one, and I mean no one is there. Maybe this is real and we should take him seriously. Who knows, but believe what you want to believe. In our 7th spot we have the 800 year old cell phone. In 2016 a group of researchers unearthed an ancient looking cell phone in Austria. The phone is covered in cuneiform writing which dates back to thousands of years ago, making this object thousands of years old. But obviously we didn't have phones back then, when this clearly looks like it was modeled after a Nokia phone. Alien hunters believe that it comes from an advanced civilization that has come to earth. Others believe that this object is proof of time travel. What's even more weird is that I can't seem to find much about this phone online, so it looks like no one has debunked it yet. Maybe it's real then, who knows? In our sixth spot we have the man named Noah. Back in 2018 a man came forward claiming that he was a time traveler from the year 2030. He called himself Noah, obviously it's not his real name, and he sat down for a television interview to share with the world what life is like in 2030. But of course his face and voice were distorted to protect his identity. He said that he can't let anyone know who he really is. Basically he said that he will be killed for speaking the truth about time travel. He goes on to prove that he's a real time traveler by getting an x-ray of his hand. Upon doing so it's revealed that there's a weird device implemented in his wrist. That's what Noah says is what helps him when he time travels. Not only that but he underwent a lie detector test and he passed it, showing that his claims were real. Now what did he say is in store for the future? Well since this occurred in 2018 he said that in 2019 it will be filled with more UFO sightings, which yes that was true. He also claims that in 2028 that's when aliens will come down to earth and that's also the year that the government will reveal that time travel is real. That's pretty intense if you ask me. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Antikythera mechanism. In 1900s a team of divers exploring the Greek island of Antikythera made a fascinating discovery. They came across an ancient shipwreck. 
The ship was filled with statues, jewelry, coins, pottery, you name it. They were all like, booyah, jackpot. As they continued searching the ship though, they came across this weird object. It was a blob of corroded bronze and wood. Two years later, an archaeologist decided to examine this and discovered it was an astronomical clock. But the items came from ancient Greece and clocks hadn't been invented then. This item was in similar size to a mantle clock and the bits of wood fragments on it suggest that it was probably in a wooden case. They also believe the case would have had like a circular face or rotating hands. There was also a knob on the side and the mechanism could rotate forwards and backwards. Needless to say, it was a fairly complex object for that time period. So some believe that it was left by a time traveler. If not, then what could this device be? And how come it was so advanced for its time? In our fourth spot, we have the year 3207. Quote, was time machine. They took me to a room filled by many kinds of displays, gadgets, wires that I had never ever seen. The head of project came to me and told all about that mystical project. A couple of years ago, an unidentified Greek man came forward saying that he traveled in time to the year 3207. He claims that he was shot forward in time and spent two days in the year 3207 as part of a top secret military program. He was paid $100,000 to do so. That after some minutes they would send me to the year 3207. As I understood, I was kind of laboratory mouse for them, you know. But the money and career that I was suggested were worth it for it. He claims that in the future, the buildings were massive, triple the size that they are today. He also says that there were flying cars and that there was strange colored grass. It wasn't green, but a deep purple. And lastly, he said that aliens, humans, big animals, and robots were all walking together down the street. Uh, that's pretty interesting, not gonna lie. Don't know if I believe that guy, but some people do. I mean, he also showed photographic evidence, but claims that the photos got a bit distorted while going through the whole time travel process. To me, they kind of just look like bad Photoshop, but you decide. In our third spot, we have Paul Dynick. Now, if you haven't heard about this case before, then oh, you're in for a shock. In 1921, a man named Paul Dynick, a Swiss-Australian teacher, slipped into a coma for about a year. For that year, he claimed that he went to the year 3096, where he switched consciousness with a man named Andrew Northman. One minute he was in a coma, next he's inside Andrew's body speaking a foreign language. For that year, he was living as Andrew. Paul was so scared to tell anyone of this experience, so he just wrote it in his diary and kept it a secret. However, just before he passed away, he gave his diary to one of his students to translate. And that's when it was revealed that he had somehow time traveled to the future. It's pretty insane. Could he be telling the truth or was it all just a coma dream? In our second spot, we have the time traveling murderer. Okay, this next story is going to leave you baffled. Back in 2014, a woman was found dead in London. It was clearly a murder. Thankfully, her attacker's DNA was found all over her body. Upon doing a forensics test, they got a match. But here's the thing. The supposed attacker was found dead a full three weeks before her victim. So how is it possible for her to kill someone when she had already died? So people think that the killer was a time traveler and that days before her own death, she went a couple weeks into the future to kill this woman. I don't even know. It's just an insane case, if you ask me. And in our number one spot today, we had the London Hammer. Back in 1936, Texas, a man named Max Hahn and his wife were out for a walk when they stumbled upon this odd rock with a tool sticking directly out of it. This is what is now called the London Hammer, or the London Artifact. It was discovered to be part of a hammer that was trapped inside a rock that dates back to being over 400 million years old. Clearly back then they did not have hammers. So how the heck did a modern day human made tool date back to a time where humans weren't even around? Theory goes that it was dropped by a time traveler, but I wanna know who would go that far back in time. Let me know in the comments below, would you rather travel to the past or the future? Number 10, 
Project Pegasus, and the Chrononauts. While that may sound like a sweet alt-rock band, Project Pegasus didn't have anything to do with music, but with moving through time. Seattle attorney Andrew Basaggio has been making claims since 2004 that when he was younger, starting at the age of 7, he participated in the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, Project Pegasus, focusing on teleportation and time travel. He and a few others were chosen at a young age because allegedly children could adapt well to the strains of moving between past, present, and future. Along with his fellow chrononauts, love the name, he adventured throughout time to places like the Gettysburg Address in 1863 and to Ford's Theater to witness the assassination of President Lincoln, quote, five or six times. I don't know why he was so obsessed with Lincoln. He was allegedly even captured in a photograph. He claims that he witnessed eight different time travel technologies throughout the course of the project and that most were based on engineering specs and sketches by Nikola Tesla. And if one person was to come up with teleportation or time travel, I think it would be Tesla himself. Pure genius, that one. Andrew even met himself a few times in the past and surprisingly didn't cause a paradox. His claims are supported by others who say that the Defense Department has had time travel capabilities for over 40 years but has kept it secret. Andrew Basaggio also ran for president in 2016, but we all know how that turned out. Maybe he should have used time travel to change the outcome. Number 9. Vrilin Ashtar Radio Incident On Saturday, November 26, 1977, in the southern United Kingdom, a mysterious voice interrupted a news broadcast and gave strange commands and predictions of the future. Accompanied by unsettling pulsing noises and echoes, the electronic sounding voice claimed to be Vrilin, a representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command. Alien or future beings sent to deliver a warning message that humans must denounce and remove all of their weapons of evil in order for an age of peace and prosperity to come to fruition, the age of Aquarius. If humans do not comply and turn from their evil ways, humanity will fall. Here's a little clip. This is the voice of Allah, representative of the Ashtar Galactic speaking to you. Though the message is foreboding and super creepy, this messenger from the future actually makes some good points and gives some decent advice, like, have no fear, seek only to know yourselves and live in harmony with the ways of your planet Earth. Seems like they were listening to the hippies at the time, and they had the right idea. After taking control of the station, they bid farewell and said they would leave our plane of existence, leaving us with their final words, may you be blessed by the supreme love and truth of the cosmos. Aww. Thanks, Verlin. Number 8. Guardian Angel In 2019, a video surfaced of a shop owner in Turkey tending to some of his merchandise. Very normal, nothing to see here. Until a man calmly walks up behind him and casually taps him on the shoulder as he walks by, causing the shop owner to turn around. But not a moment later, a gate from a large truck driving by swings open, nearly killing him. And if it wasn't for this mystery man's actions, the shop owner would surely be dead. The truck driver returned to apologize for what had happened, but the mysterious stranger was nowhere to be found. Some commenters believe that this man had come back from the future to save lives. Perhaps not just the shopkeeps. That's the only one that we caught on camera. Others have noticed that the two men look similar. Even their outfits aren't far off, implying that maybe it's the same man or their son somehow come back from the future. Though it looks like it was filmed on a potato, so who can be sure? Number 7. Rudolph Fence The story of Rudolph Fence is one that has been hotly debated amongst the time travel investigation community. In 1951, people in Times Square in New York City noticed a man suddenly appear, wearing 19th century clothing. He appeared to be disoriented and confused, and after running into an intersection in a daze, he was hit by a car and fatally injured. When his body was inspected, they found strange items in his possession that appeared to have come from another time. A copper token for a beer worth five cents bearing the name of a saloon, which was unknown even to older residents of the area. A bill for the care of a horse and the washing of a carriage made by a stable that was not listed in any address book. Old banknotes, business cards with his name and address, as well as a letter sent to him postmarked in 1876. These items in his attire have led people to believe that Rudolph was a man from the past, probably from 1876, who unfortunately slipped through time to a place that he didn't or couldn't comprehend, and his confusion ultimately killed him. Tragic story, really. Number 6. Bob White In 2003, Dave Hill, along with countless others, received an email from Bob White. Normally, a spam email would just get ignored by Dave, but this one was too strange to pass up. The email explained that he needed help from a time traveler, or any alien disguised as human, because his life had been severely tampered with, and he needed, quote, temporal reversion to correct it. He resorted to the internet to find help. You ever come across anything like time travel? 
He asked the people receiving the message for strange mechanical parts that didn't exist, like an AMD dimensional warp generator module containing the GRC79 induction motor, or an Acme 5X24 series time transducing capacitor with built in temporal displacement. I don't even think a Time Lord could help him find these ridiculous sounding parts. But Dave Hill decided to have some fun and responded to his message saying that he could get what he needed. And he even sent an old hard drive motor to Bob, claiming that it was a warp generator, which Bob gratefully accepted, believing it was the part he needed. It's a time machine, Napoleon. We bought it online. You're right. It works, Napoleon. You don't even know. It was later revealed that Bob White was a man named Robbie Tadino, a 22 year old from Massachusetts who admitted to sending over 100 million messages for help out into cyberspace, and truly believed and still does believe that he was affected by time travel and needs to make a machine to fix it. The story he describes and the machine he seems intent on building is so specific that many people are convinced he has met time travelers or aliens and is really trying to recreate their technology with human things that just don't exist yet. Let's just hope he gets it all sorted out. Number Five, the Philadelphia Experiment and Montauk Project. I've talked about these before in a previous video, but they require another mention here as there are so many accounts of what happened that it's overwhelming. Allegedly, there was a secret military operation being performed in 1943 at the shipyard aboard the USS Eldridge. The, ex the experiment involved cloaking, not time travel, strangely enough, but when they attempted to conceal the ship with the technology they developed, the ship did indeed disappear, but that was because it was moved 10 minutes into the past, which reportedly caused some of the crew to go mad. And later, another secret military operation called the Montauk Project was tasked with creating gates for time travel, using psychic links from children who are much more attuned to these kinds of things apparently, and can open their minds more, so the witnesses claim. One of these many gates that were opened apparently led back to the USS Eldridge during the 10 minutes of time dilation, but these two experiments are linked by one person who has since shared their experience. Number 4, Al Bielik. Al Bielik was a Navy officer aboard the USS Eldridge during the Philadelphia experiment, also known as Project Rainbow. And when the time jump occurred, he wasn't sent 10 minutes into the past, he claims that he was sent forward to the year 2137. When he was rescued from the water, he was taken to a futuristic hospital, where he was treated for radiation sickness they say he developed from the time jump. He described major differences in the world, the coastlines being swallowed by the oceans, worldwide government collapse, followed by the rise of a system that allowed everyone to get what they need when they needed it, for free, by abolishing the the concept of money. He was eventually sent back and continued to live his life, burdened by what he had learned, with few believing him, until he was later recruited by the Montauk Project as their program director for the psychics involved with creating the time tunnels, which he used to investigate as far back as 100,000 BC and as far forward as the year 6037. Of course, he maintains that the government has done everything in their power to stop him from revealing all of this, disavowing him once he went public with his stories. Do you believe his story? Let me know in the comments. Number three, time traveling Trump. Now, I don't like talking about this former first family very much unless it has to do with all the current investigations, but some of these coincidences are just a little too eerie, though I do believe that they are just that. This conspiracy theory came from a discovery on the Library of Congress website, where readers found books from the 1890s, one called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, and another called 1900, or The Last President. The first is about a young man named Baron Trump, who discovers portals for time travel, and at one point in the book he was actually guided by a man named Dawn. In the second book, an odd choice for president wins the election, and has someone with the last name Pence in their cabinet. Even the address where New York's Trump Tower now stands was mentioned. Personally, I believe that the former president's son Barron was named after the character in the book, not the other way around. But the connections found are certainly interesting. Number 2. Mike Markham In early 1995, 21-year-old Mike Madman Markham attempted to build a time machine on his front porch. Of course, it didn't work, but that didn't deter him, and he kept working towards his goal. He later stole the expensive parts that he needed and caused a bit of trouble doing so. Then, after he got out of jail, he went on a radio program called Coast to Coast AM to talk about the machine he was building, saying that he was nearly finished and would be testing it soon, even giving out his phone number so that anyone with knowledge on the subject could help him out. Then he disappeared off the face of the earth. No one could find him for months, after which he said he was going to travel back in time only with his cell phone, and later that same week, an old story was dug up from the 1930s of a man who was found dead on a beach in California, encapsulated in some sort of metal tube with a strange device, the description of which matches that of a cell phone from the 1990s. Could that be the eventual fate of Mike? 
And finally, our number one, under the sink. In 2006, a Swedish man by the name of Hakan Nordvist was fixing a leak from a cracked pipe under his sink when he noticed something strange. A bright light that seemed to beckon him, in a way. He crawled in and suddenly appeared somewhere completely different, but he wasn't alone. He claims that he met someone there, or rather, he met himself. He claimed that he ran into himself, but a future version, perhaps around 70 years old. And since he knew no one would believe him, he pulled out his cell phone and filmed the meeting. The two men do look remarkably similar but the clincher for this whole story is when they rolled up their sleeves and revealed that they both have the exact same tattoo in the exact same place. We all know that one of the main rules of time travel is to never interact with yourself, so we're lucky he didn't cause a paradox and rip a hole in time and space. Mm -hmm.